Hi everybody, it's Dave Isaacs with you, and for today's Song of the Week, we're going to take a look at the great Guy Clark's classic, L.A. Freeway. Check out this intro. Now that's actually the vocal melody that he's playing worked into the basic chords of the song, which are very straightforward. I'm capoed on the second fret. We are in the key of A, but playing G fingerings. One chord, G. D da 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 C. Da 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 da. That's the four. Back to one. Da di da da da. Inverted D7. Now if you're not familiar with this chord, Here's D, here's D7, basically just pointing it in the other direction, right? So index is here on the third string at the second fret, index is here, second string, first fret, ring is here, first string, second fret. Now that's ordinarily the way you play D7. What we're going to do is pick up the middle and ring fingers and shift these over to string 6 with the middle, pardon me, I'm not trying to flip anyway the bird, and string three second fret with the ring. And so what we have here is D7 over an F sharp bass. And we're gonna do a lick that involves lifting the index finger. And then open, pinky goes down, comes up. So that's the way he expresses the D7. That's actually not at all uncommon in this sort of uh, Texas folk style. You hear Lyle Lovett doing this all the time too. It also just, I think, sounds better when you're playing in G to have that lower bass note. Um, the same thing shows up in Fleetwood Mac's lines, Landslide. So in general, it's not unusual if you're playing in a G position and finger picking to go with inversion of D or D7 because you get a lower bass note than the open fourth string would give you. Anyway, the melody then, back up all your dishes, take note, suck. So the melody, Pack up all your dishes, make note of all good wishes, say goodbye to the landlord for me, son of a bitch has always bored me. And so he plays that with bass notes and some occasional filler. So we're on a G chord. I am using the ring finger on the bass note fingering because I need pinky, number one, free to get the second string third fret, and index free to get the second string first fret so I can play. That's down a G scale from five, four, three, two, one within the scale. I'm using a thumb pick because this is my preference on steel string these days. You don't have to, but I do find it very helpful. Guy used, I think, a thumb pick and, um, and nails, and I believe he used acrylic nails. Right now I have very little nail on here, which is why the... See, so notice if I bring in more nail, I get a brighter tone. But right now my nails are pretty short. I'm using index and middle resting on the third and second strings, my thumb hitting the sixth, and I've got this modified G fingering. It's really a G5 because it's just, or A5, sixth string ring finger and second string pinky, and we do this. The bass note alone pop the second and third strings, but 
catch them right away, he plays it sort of staccato and it has an accent. Second time, you let it ring, and then we're gonna just fill in the ends on the open G, like this. One and two and three and four and. So, one and two and three and four, then. Just maintaining the steady thumb, but this time on the downbeats, on string six, while the melody goes, my pinky has come off in the left hand, and so I'm going index on fret one. It's a pinch, really, played with the bass note. Pull off, hit the bass note with the thumb, middle finger gets the third string, second fret, would be an A if it wasn't for the capo, and then thumb, and then lift that middle finger. Watch this. Together, pull, thumb, finger, thumb, finger, thumb to finish the bar. So here's our two bars of G and for N. Something you want to get used to in this kind of style is just recognizing that your thumb and fingers will either be together or you'll be playing melody notes with the fingers in between the thumb notes. Finger, finger. Notice those are off beats. Whereas in measure one, the thumb hat, the, uh, not thumb, sorry, the index has off beats on the open G string like this. One and two and three and four and. Just filling space, but. Works really well. That's just the one measure. Here now is both. Pull. Now. Now right here, when I come down to this open G, third string rather, at the end of this walk down, this melody, the next thing I'm actually going to hit is the open D string plucked with a finger. So this is thumb, finger. That open fourth string is a setup for a hammer-on. This is kind of tricky. Because what we're going to do is go into a C chord, actually a modified C because I've got my pinky on the high E string at the third fret up from the capo. But we're going to do this. You might want to try, first of all, just holding this C chord with the added pinky, release the middle finger, strike that fourth string with a finger in the right hand, play the hammer on by slapping that middle finger back down, and then at the same time as the middle finger lands, the thumb plucks the fifth string. So it's a little tricky to coordinate. You are then going to follow that up immediately with the two high strings, two and one, on off beats, one and two and three. And we're gonna keep that thumb going and notice this pattern on the C. Thumb third, thumb first. So, I'm playing from the pickup to measure three. One, and thumb fingers, thumb finger, high. This is once again following that vocal melody, but the reason we needed the pinky up here was to set up this melody note and then have fingers free Middle goes here on the second fret of that first string and then lifts. So I'm going to play from the pickup to measure four now. And one, and two, and. Here are the first two measures. Now, sometimes it really is okay to leave a space in the thumb as long as you're clear on when you're coming back on the beat. But the foundation of this style is that most of the time the thumb is, if not steady, on a single string or on alternating strings close to it. So here it is again. Notice thumb against finger. See if you can differentiate hearing the thumb bass, the melody up top, and the occasional filler.
one and two and three and four and Now, this is really cool what happens in this next measure because what he does is even though the chord resolves to G, he stays on the C for a moment to get a suspension, then resolves this ring finger note down to the middle finger, second fret, which is more of our regular inverted G. So check this out, I'm coming from the previous measure. So I'm starting measure 5 with the ring finger on a C bass, my pinky on the 2nd string D, so 3rd fret here on the 5th, 3rd fret here on the 2nd. I'm plucking thumb alone, 2 and 3 together, and then replacing this finger 3 with finger 2. Now the chord is G slash B. So here's measure 5, thumb, fingers, thumb, single, thumb, single. So, thumb, fingers, thumb, fingers, thumb, finger, thumb, finger. In context from the previous measure, sorry, in context from the previous bar, and you can kind of pop that. We're not making too much out of the bass, but we want to hear it. Second line, starting at measure five. Then, back to this. We had exactly that in measure two. This is now measure six. So, ring finger is back to the sixth string third fret. Index is back to the second string first fret. We have together, pull, thumb, middle finger, thumb, open string, thumb, open D, and this time, here's that inverted D7 I was talking about. The middle finger goes to the second fret sixth string, and here is this melodic figure. No, it's almost entirely off beats, except off hammer. So this is once again one of these situations like we had getting into measure three where you hammer the finger on the downbeat but the thumb plays on the downbeat at the same time. So you are not striking this note with the right hand, with the picking hand, it's just hammered. But the picking hand does strike the bass note at that moment. So, so notice your inverted D7, notice my fingering. Index, ring. Now together with the open string and back. Thumb, open first, pinky second, index, open. So keep in mind that the melody lick is one. with the fingering. I'm going to play the whole thing through for you again. There is tab either linked below if you're watching this on YouTube or if you're following this from my blog, it will be embedded as well. So here we go. One, two, three, four.
It pretty much continues with that or something very close to it through the verse, and then we come to the end of the verse, we land, so it's two verses, then we land on the G and and then the same lick that we use to end the intro with the chorus, he then strums. D, G, one, two, a three, a four, and on the C. G. Now you could strum this, but a simple brush back and forth with thumb and finger works very nicely. So notice what I'm doing is downstroke with the thumb and brushing up with the pad of my index. So into the chorus. C, D, G, and push. And then you can slip back into the... And then you're back to... If you watch video of Guy playing it, you'll notice that the strummy part in the chorus, really all of it, I mean, players like that, it's it's about the song, the part defines the song, but it's not like he's playing Mozart and every note is meant to be exactly the same way. I mean, it kind of is like he's playing Mozart because he's the Mozart of Texas songwriting to me. But point being, there's room for variation, and so when you're accompanying the voice, you really should be more focused on just making sure the rhythm is where it needs to be and you're on the right chord, and that you're not overpowering the vocal, that it's the right feeling if you happen to hit this string instead of that in that context while you're sort of strum brushing that chorus. It's really fine. I hope you enjoy this lesson. Uh, wherever you are seeing it, whether you're seeing it on YouTube or on my website, NashvilleGuitarGuru.com, I've also been doing some partnering with Blue, BlueRoofLearning.com, so you might see it there, and thank you guys for helping me get the word out. The Song of the Week lessons will continue because I've been enjoying these a whole lot, and I'm not abandoning conceptual lessons, but I know everybody likes to see stuff like this too, and it's lots of fun for me. If you don't know Guy Clark's music, please go check him out. Uh, L.A. Freeway is one of the great classics. Desperado's Waiting for a Train is another one that you may know that the Highwaymen did and lots of other people. Um, I'm a big fan of Texas music and Texas songwriting, and Guy Clark is the grand old man. Well, him and Willie Nelson. So have a great one. I hope you enjoyed this lesson, and I'll see you next time.